Hello, users, and welcome. Yeah, it's happening again. Welcome back to Above It All, the series in where every now and then we take a look at Joe Biden's cognitive decline and see exactly what's going on with that fucker. So, I, for whatever reason, don't know where my hairbrush is. It's been a few days. And it's now been three days, and my hair looks like fucking shit. Like, look at this. And I don't know where my hairbrush is. So I'm sorry for my on-screen appearance. I'm so sorry. Um, But you know who's not sorry? Joe Biden? Let me just play this clip, because it's surely going to embarrass the ever-loving shit out of you. Well, you know, Thanks so the- much. That's really our time. I apologize. You can't do that to black media. You I can't do that to white media and black media, because my wife has to go on at 6 o'clock. Okay. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community. Well, you know, give- I don't know why that fucking cuts off there. And I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to look for the reason why. I'm gonna if someone shows me the full clip, I will make a follow up video. Also I just realized that this fucking browser isn't even the whole size of the screen here. Holy mackerel. Uh what's going on with hydroxychloroquine? Mm, new study finds. I'll check that out in the next video. But anyway, I've got this other Joe Biden video here. I'm prepared to say that I have a record of over forty years and that I'm going to beat Joe Biden. Honestly, that's the first thing I think of when this kind of clip happens. I'm going to beat Joe Biden. You sure are, champ. You sure are. Because Jesus fucking Christ, this is embarrassing. This is, again, this is fundamentally embarrassing on, like, a molecular level. You know, like, this is so goddamn embarrassing that, like, just, like, looking at this, like, if you have to probably figure out why you vote for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Like, imagine saying that literally to, like, fa- like I don't know, is he saying that to, like, the hypothetical black person watching the show? Is he saying that to, uh, I think this is Charlemagne of The Breakfast Club, as it says in the logo there beneath the Twitter icons? Like, is he, or is he saying that to him? Like, I don't know. Like, the context kind of cuts it off. And again, I'm a bad YouTuber. I'm not going to research for the full context. At least I'm going to tell you that right now. There may be more to this, you know. And I do get it. Joe Biden's trying to be affable. He's trying to joke. But, I mean, it's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I, it really is one of those things where, again, like, if this were Bernie Sanders, like, it really goes to show, like, how much policy matters. If this were Bernie Sanders saying that same exact thing, it'd be like... That, that would actually be genuinely kind of hilarious because Bernie Sanders has the most pro-minority fucking policy platform literally ever conceived in American history. So it's like, okay, yeah, at least he's got the policy to back it up. He's going to legalize marijuana and then distribute the funds to black communities who were damaged via the drug war. Like, how it, like you know what I mean? Like, But Joe Biden has no policy, has nothing, no agenda. He has nothing. He said again, recently, and I'm going to try to find this one, where he said, again, that he is not in favor of Medicare for all in the middle of a global pandemic where millions and millions of people don't have health insurance and millions and millions of people are losing what little health insurance that they had. So these guys are fucking psychos. These guys are fucking wild psychos. And the worst part about it is they've got us by the balls because this is the thing. Joe Biden is right here. He is 1,000% factually right. What? You're going to vote for Donald Trump? He's going to do nothing. He's not only going to do nothing, but he's going to accelerate the death of your community. Reminder, 80% of hospitalized COVID patients in Georgia are African American. 30% of the population is African American. Uh Uh-oh, I wonder what the disparity is. Oh, it's because the fucking government doesn't care about you. If you're poor, if you're disabled, if you're a minority voter, if you're anything that's not a straight white male, society does not give a flying fuck about you. And definitely the Donald Trump campaign doesn't care. They've already got their token black. They've already got their token trans person. They've already got their token gay person. You know, like, they all they need is at least one of those people to meet the quota, and they're good. Because they don't give a flying fuck about us and that's the problem with joe biden's campaign is he's got us by the balls he's got us by the fucking balls and this is why 
I do think Joe Biden should win over Donald Trump because one, Donald Trump's meltdown on Twitter will be hilarious. Two, Joe Biden is going to die soon. It's obvious. Look at him. Either that or something is going to happen to prevent him from running for a second term. That leaves the main enemy being whoever the VP is. And if we can strategize for four fucking years to take down a VP, honestly, I think it's doable. If you spend that time valuably, unlike, uh, I, honestly, I'm not going to make this criticism right now, but I do think the time spent from 2016 to 2020 with the Bernie movement was a little, you know, I do think it should have been more Biden focused, at least throughout the primary. You know what I mean? Like they didn't really touch on Biden's anything. And it's just like the next progressive uh, campaign has to be a firebrand one. We can't do this Bernie Sanders stuff anymore. We have to graduate from Bernie Sanders. And that's my critique here is that like, again, he's got us by the balls. Like, what are you going to do? Vote for Trump? Of course not, because Trump is fucking evil. What are you going to do? Not vote? I mean, if you live in 45 of the 50 states, that doesn't fucking matter. Me, I live in a swing state, so I'm stuck with this old coot. You know, like, people are talking more and more about North Carolina lately than I thought they would. I didn't think it would be this big of a deal. I thought Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Michigan, and Wisconsin would be more big of a deal for this election, because that was, that's what they were big deals in uh, 2016. But North Carolina is turning into a very, 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 you know, like tied in presidential polling here so it's at the point where like honestly again I i'm just at the point where i live in a swing state i'm voting for joe biden i'm sorry if that offends you if he's the nominee which it doesn't look like he will be which makes this a lot more funny and again this whole vote shaming conversation unless you vote for donald trump because that just makes you a psychopath i don't give a fuck who you vote for if you believe in bernie's platform that's all that matters to me how you vote doesn't fucking matter to me i think it's a waste of time i just put this in the videos just to have people have my perspective i I will vote in North Carolina, whoever has the highest likelihood of not facilitating a Donald Trump re-election, that's who I will, vo will vote for. If it's Andrew Cuomo, I'm sorry, it's Andrew Cuomo. If it's Joe Biden, it's Joe Biden. If it's Furman Supreme, it's Furman Supreme. And that's just how the cookie will crumble. And that's that's my primary thing. Because my thing is voting doesn't matter. What you scribble on an election paper does not fucking matter. What matters is how you talk to other people. What matters is how you feel about your community. How you connect with your community. What matters is having a support structure that you support back and that they support you to create like a life worth living. That's what matters. Who's the president of the United States? Like, yeah, Bernie would have been a hell of a lot better. But at the end of the day, we're back stuck with neoliberalism. And it's not like we haven't been here before. So in the next four years, we need to basically figure out who the VP is as soon as that happens. Right? Immediately figure that out. Um, and then devise a strategy to take them down in 2024. I think that's going to be the most useful thing. And I think if that's the thing, if that's the position we're at, I think, honestly, as far as potential VPs go, Amy Klobuchar, I'm going to do this story next. This is going to be a separate video. So go watch Above It All 389. Amy Klobuchar, that is a perfect VP. If we're talking about 2024 takedowns, that is perfect. That is fucking perfect. I love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. And that's what I'm thinking about for VP. Who's going to be the easiest to tear down in four years from now? And Amy Klobuchar, if that's it, if that's the person, I think that'll be easy mode. Elizabeth Warren, I think if we have four years to figure out a strategy, we could do it. But I mean, at the same time, it would be like an interesting kind of like supervillain thing. Like she completely destroyed the United States by preventing Bernie Sanders from becoming president. And it singularly rests on her shoulders. She is personally responsible. If Trump wins a second term, she will be personally responsible for the facilitation of Trump's reelection. She is personally responsible for propping up Joe Biden. She is a disgusting, conniving, careerist, snaky cunt. And I will not i will not hesitate for the rest of my time on this planet unfortunately it looks like she will have less time on this planet than i will but for that remainder of time where we're both alive and kicking and even after she's dead and i'm talking about her legacy i will remind people her core primary like like addition to the united states political discourse was preventing bernie sanders 
from becoming president, or at least the Democratic nominee, preventing poor people from having health care, preventing poor people from having someone that they can believe in. Something simple. Bernie didn't even need to do anything. We fucking believed in him. And that's the thing. Is Bur- like The whole campaign, every centrist, including Warren and all these other people, was not for Joe Biden. It could have been anyone. That's why they had the Super Smash Brothers fucking roster like two weeks before everyone dropped out. It's because that someone else wanted to be the coalescence boy, but no one else got it. And then Warren stayed in, and her primary contribution to public life is making sure that not just that we don't have health care for our children, but that we don't even have someone that we feel like cares about us. Like, that's the thing, is that, like, the visceral level of disregard for the 99%. You can't even let us feel like there is somebody in power that has our back. That's how deep this hatred of the poor goes for neoliberals like Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren. They, just, the idea that poor people can be optimistic, right? Like, that poor people can just live their lives in a state of optimism, that is too much. That is too much of a bridge to cross for people like Joe Biden. And I I know this has gone a little bit off topic here, but of course, this all goes back around. If you ain't black, then like, if you have a problem uh, figuring out whether or not you're going to vote for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It gets to the point where he can just make these fucking statements willy nilly. And this is now becoming Hillary Clinton fucking on repeat. And again, we're just in a worse situation. More of our family members have died. I can tell you in this point in 2016 election, my mom was still alive and what little difference that has in my life i think well what i guess little is an incorrect word to use there but what difference that has in my life puts a lot of change in my perspective here you know what i mean like i am left with a situation where between 2016 and 2020 i lost one of the only people in my life and you know i'm in a completely different home environment because i live with the other half of my family now um my father's half of the family you know but like it's like it's one of those situations where, like, if Bernie were elected president in 2016, now it's possible that, like, we wouldn't have been able to get Medicare for all that, you know, but, like, just hypothetical best case scenarios, right? Like, my mom could still be alive right now. Like, she could still be, like, you know, within, like, 20, 30 feet of me, you know, like, you know, just living and existing. But because of these fucking ghouls because of people like hillary clinton joe biden and so forth these people that take us for granted my life is permanently altered i will never ever for the rest of my life because you can rebuild a business you can rebuild an industry you can rebuild a fucking building right you cannot re fucking animate someone from the dead and especially during the coronavirus thing like the fact that these people are still using this language 90,000 deaths later, and keep in mind, this isn't all Trump's fault, these are the systemic fucking relationships we've had that create 80% hospitalization rate for African Americans in Georgia, these are the systems of, of, of society that we've had that have been unchanged under the Obama administration, unchanged under the Bill Clinton administration, unchanged since Ronald Reagan, a lot of these institutions, unchanged before then, you know, from the New Deal, the racism of the New Deal, you know, the the only way that the New Deal was actually able to be orchestrated was because of the coalition with racist Southern Democrats in the 1940s and 30s. So it's like, this all goes back and they've done nothing. And now we're at the point where it's just, we're all suffering and they're still, because this hasn't affected them yet, we are still just fucking around. They're still just doing that bullshit. They're still just chilling in Cedar Rapids. And oh, I can't wait for the day that I can celebrate the deaths of Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, you know, like fucking Bill Clinton. Like I, when these fuckers die, dude, you got to subscribe to my channel cuz I am going to throw such a party that the likes of which have never been seen before. But anyway, I think that's enough vehement disgust at our political situation in the United States. If you appreciated this video, let me know. And if you didn't, also let me know. But again, I will not vote or shame unless you vote for Donald Trump, then you're a piece of shit garbage. But if you vote for someone else, I don't give a shit. Unless you're in a swing state, then we can have a conversation about it, you know? But if you're not in a swing state, honestly, you got to stop talking about this. Like, seriously. Like, I'm not, like, if you live in fucking New York and you're like, I'm not going to vote for Biden, you 
are a fucking useless piece of garbage and you need to reorient what you're talking about to something that's actually productive. Because if you live in fucking New Jersey and you're going out on Twitter every day, I'm not going to vote for Biden. Guess what? Newsflash. Nobody gives a fuck. So do something better with your time. I'm sorry. But thank you for watching. And I'm going to eat breakfast.